Why are some glamping businesses, eco-retreats and unique holiday rentals wildly successful at attracting guests, regardless of what they seem to offer? How are they able to stay so confident about their bookings each year, even though they don't seem to be working as hard as you? Yet you struggle to understand what works in this industry and what doesn't, and you constantly feel overwhelmed by it all. You thought it would be as easy as setting up some amazing holiday accommodation and then just sitting back and letting the bookings roll in. And yet, that's not what's happening. Welcome to episode 22. Glamping and unique holiday rentals are surging in popularity with the growing desire of customers to book holidays that deliver an experience. They are also the new business of choice for those wanting to improve their work-life balance. So how do you build a strong business like this that gives you the life you need and a great investment? I'm Sarah Riley and I want to share what I've discovered after being immersed in this industry for over 20 years to inspire you to find out more about what's going on. Welcome, this is the business of glamping and unique holiday rentals. Hello, hello. I've returned from Denver, Colorado and I've been on mountain time for a while so I'm feeling a little bit jagged. Sorry about that and hopefully it won't reflect in this podcast This podcast I decided to put together because of a few things that people have been saying to me recently and it seems to be a real struggle and as it's something that I can help you with I thought I would share some of my own insights into all of this and hopefully it will help you. And it's all about basically getting guests because it's all very well to have your accommodation, to have your units, to have whatever it is you're offering, tree houses, yurts, safari tents, any kind of retreat or anything else that you've decided to set up. But it isn't actually going to be maximizing the potential income of what you originally established if you're not getting the guests. So basically it means your occupancy isn't high enough and you could actually be improving on what you're offering and bringing more people in to enjoy what you offer and also giving them a really memorable stay and connecting to each other and connecting to nature. If you're not attracting them, if they're not coming to stay with you, if your beds are empty and if you aren't increasing your occupancy by what you want to increase it by, then you're not going to be making the profits that you're hoping for. And this is why so many people come to me and ask me for tips and insights about how to actually increase their bookings. It's actually quite simple when you know the techniques. And actually, today, more than ever, you have the tools at your disposal. So it's something that has changed so much And yet so many people are actually freaking out because they're not able to fill their beds. Then, of course, the self-doubt starts to creep in. Is it because what you're offering isn't good enough? Maybe people don't like it. Maybe you've poured your heart and soul and passion into building something that just simply doesn't click for other people. This is when people start to feel rejected, frustrated, and very overwhelmed. And are you listening to this, feeling those things? It can be a real struggle, and I know exactly how you feel. You start to wonder if you've done the right thing, putting all your money into this business without any guarantees of guests, without any guarantees of future customers. If you're using booking platforms, then that can be quite expensive, even though they definitely are an important part of your journey. But what you want to do is to make sure you're not relying on them too heavily and you have some kind of exit plan. But what do you do if you just simply don't know where to start? 
Well, hopefully by the time you finish listening to this, you'll have some of the answers you need and you'll understand the systems you need to put in place to start attracting your guests and get them booking and filling up your calendar, especially for next season. And if you are here as a new startup business, then this can get you thinking about the potentials that you have to fill those beds and to bring in the income that you want in the future for your new business. So maybe you're here now because you know there are new ways to get your business in front of your guests or your potential guests so that they make those bookings and become your customers. But at the moment, you're just not sure what works and what doesn't. Now, there's so many places where you can learn random techniques all patched together from the free information that people are offering from gurus scattered throughout the different industries but they don't necessarily know what works for this industry. Deep down, you know that. You know that you will not be able to learn from that information. You need to have a very specific, industry-specific approach. But you also know that you're ready for some kind of strategic approach and a step-by-step process, because that is what is going to take you from where you are now to where you want to be. It's going to be a challenge, But once you know where to start, you can start putting the steps in place. There is a better way of doing things that will help you move forward. And if you're feeling slightly overwhelmed at the moment, if you're worried about whether you're going to get the relevant bookings for your new business or for your existing business, that means you're going to be able to pay salaries at the end of the month then this is the kind of thing you need to really embrace and knuckle down and listen to. I'm really lucky because I've come from a family of entrepreneurs and I was brought up earning a living from a very young age. I worked in a multitude of businesses, but all in the kind of service industry. So I understand the value of hard work But I also understand the real frustrations of running a business. And it's really interesting. My family had two main key businesses. So one was in health and wellness and the other one was a small boutique hospitality business. And I would have to say that both of those businesses have led me to where I am now. And I have everything to thank my family for. You could say that I started doing my fair share of the tasks any business owner would rather not do, such as emptying bins and all of that stuff, changing sheets, making sure guests are happy, but also a lot of the stuff that owners do love to do, such as networking, connecting and sharing their passion with the customers who are staying with them. But I've also seen the other side of things. So all those worries and concerns when things aren't going quite right. I've seen my family struggle to find the answers when they really needed them most. The one thing I also remember is being asked about something I didn't know. And I knew that there must be a way of achieving something, but I just didn't know what the answer was. And I found that incredibly frustrating and really hard because it was my family I wasn't able to help my family so I remember being asked if I knew of a way of increasing the guests bookings beyond what we were doing at that time so at that time at the beginning occupancy was relatively low and there was definitely room for improvement there was room for earning more and increasing the income we had as a business We had rooms and at that time we weren't filling all of them. So this was over 20 years ago and it has stuck with me, that feeling of not knowing the answers. I didn't have the answers. And most of all, we didn't then have the tools that we have now to find the answers and to learn the techniques that other businesses use to apply to our own business. And there were so few tools out there that we could use and they were really quite primitive to what they are now. They're so sophisticated now, such as Facebook ads. It's so, it's such a sophisticated system or Google ads. Now, this is all stuff that we can now use to find our guests But back then, we didn't have any of it. One of the biggest things that has struck me is how right now, at this time, 
You have everything at your fingertips to achieve anything you want. We take it all for granted, but this is an epic age of the internet. You can learn how to do almost anything within just a few moments, within just a few clicks, to fix the problem you might be having right now. You just need to know where to look and the tools that can help. This is why I'm so determined to help, especially small and medium sized businesses. I know the daily frustrations experienced in all of them. I understand how desperate things can get when you simply feel you're struggling on your own and you just don't know where to turn to help, to get some help. I remember the look on my mum's face. She was desperate, she had some questions and she had no one who could really answer them for her. And that can be so overwhelming and so frustrating and more importantly, it can be really quite isolating and seem a little bit scary when you know you have a problem and you just don't know how to fix it. It's also really frustrating when you know you need to do something but you feel you just don't have the skills even to take on something extra, something new, maybe a new tool or a bit of technology or something else you might just be uncomfortable with because it's pushing you out of your comfort zone. This is ultimately why I offer the help that I offer to help with the whole approach of learning, to dissolve those feelings of frustration and overwhelm and not knowing where to start so that actually you can just be given the instructions about what you need to do and find out how to do it. And it's as simple as that. It's really a step by step journey, but small steps, taking each small step one step at a time, when you look back, it's a massive journey that you've just had. You've actually traveled so far, you've become so much more than the past. I say it's a little bit like a football game as well. So I'm always saying this because I think it's a really good way of summing it all up. Because in this world of what we do, running our own businesses and finding guests, finding customers, all of that, it's just like a football match. Sometimes you fall flat on your face in the mud and it feels like your world has ended. But other times you score a goal and you're running around the pitch screaming your head off because you've just done the most amazing thing and it feels great. This is what this business is all about and it's about at the end of the day knowing that there's ups and there's downs. The most important thing is keeping your energy up so that you have enough energy to stay in the game. Because those who stay in the game are the ones who achieve the most. And this is key, isn't it? This is key. If you can find a way to increase your energy and keep playing the game, that's when you will survive and thrive. But you need to find the thing for you that will help keep you inspired, keep your energy up, give the information you need to go forward and to move forward and to progress. Most importantly, you need to find yourself a place where you're not going to feel isolated anymore because actually running a business can be quite isolating, even if you have a team of people with you helping you because you're the lead, you're at the helm, you're the leader of your business and that can be quite an isolating place. But nothing will happen for the better unless you do something about it. You're the one that needs to take action and you're the one that needs to listen to your inner voices and your inner doubt or your inner feelings of what you need to do next. No one can tell you what you need to do next. It comes from you. You're telling yourself what you need to do. So let's just get th one thing clear. If you care about your business and your guests, then I can confidently assume that what you have to offer them is amazing. It's full of wonderful details that you've really thought about, that you've really worked on, that you've really kind of crafted for your guest experience so that they can really relax and reconnect with each other and with nature and that is something that, that will be a memory for them and their family. They will love staying with you and will love how the whole experience leaves them feeling refreshed and inspired as, a, as if they've had a proper holiday, a proper break. This is what you do. And I know that if you're here and if you're wanting to improve your business and if you're wanting to spend time on your business, then you will be giving them something amazing. 
that's what you're good at. So if you've been having feelings that people aren't visiting your business because what you have isn't good enough, then that's just rubbish. Don't listen to that. That is just limiting beliefs, limiting you in your progression. It's something you probably didn't really think about before you started this whole journey. And you probably also didn't think about the fact that an accommodation business, a holiday rental business, a a glamping business or an eco resort, actually the majority of what you do is an online business. What? (laughs) Excuse me, an online business? Of course it's not. All the services are delivered on the ground. You see your guests face to face. Yeah, you do. But where do you find your guests and where do they find you before they become a customer? Online. Where do they communicate with you before they actually part with any of their money? Online. And if they were actually just searching around the internet and, you know, looking for their next holiday or going on social media to look for their next holiday, that all happens online too. So it's only when they've seen your website or looked at your booking platform or whatever it is and they see what you've got to offer through your pictures and your graphics and your videos and anything else that you offer and then of course your actual offer that you've crafted for them, they see all of that online. And then when they decide they want to actually buy something from you, where do they do that? They do that online. They do it all online. That's where they take out their credit card and they pay for your services. And that's where they get the confirmation booking email, all online. It's only then when they actually come to stay with you that they actually physically are in front of you and using your facilities. So up until that point, your business is online. It's a shocker, isn't it? It's something that every time I highlight this to people, even though they they know it, it's kind of just me telling them that is really quite a significant step. They know this all happens online, but they've never ever considered their business as an online business. Now, one of the businesses that my own family had was a shop and this had a wonderful big window And so people could walk past it and they could see what we were selling in the window. So it was health and wellness uh, products and whole foods and all that kind of stuff. Really healthy, wonderful foods. And I, one of my jobs was to dress the window. And I started to realize that when I dressed the window, if I put certain things on one side, then the mothers with their kids would see those things when they left the school after the school pickup. And they would go past the window and either the mother or the kid would notice this thing in the window and would come in the shop. And then I realised if I put other products on the other side of the window, then that's how the people leaving a big office that was just down the road, when they left their work to go and get their cars from the car park, they would go past the shop window too and they would see these other products that were very specific for them. And they would come in the shop. So it was only really when I noticed these things that I understood the value of a shop front and how important it was. Now, where is your shop front? Where do your customers pass by to come in to your shop and buy your services or your products? Well, online, of course, it's all happening online. So with that being said, you need to ask yourself how good are you at getting your business found online? And how good are you actually communicating with your potential customers or existing customers or past customers, future customers, whatever? How good are you at communicating with them online? And are you communicating with them in the different way which is specific for them, which will mean something for them? That all happens also online. And have you been thinking through that process? Have you been asking a a friend to give you some critical analysis on your approach? I remember the first time I mentioned this to a client I'd been working with to set up their business and they absolutely had kittens. They They did not want to even think about this because for them, they were really worried about computers they were worried about technology they didn't really grasp it and they kind of felt that okay that's that's going to all have to end because I can't do it and therefore I I may as well just stop doing what I'm doing 
But that's not the right thing. That is definitely not the right approach. If you can't do it, you can learn how to do it. It's really simple. There's training out there to help you, to take you through the exact steps and the processes that you need to make it happen for you. But again, even if you don't think you can do it with the training, that's fine. Just get someone else to go through the training for you and to do it on your behalf. This is one of the ways that you can really get your guest attraction strategy working for you, even if you feel you don't have the skills to do it yourself. And it means then as well that you have full control about where you're getting your guests from. You're not having to rely on expensive booking platforms. You're not having to rely on external forces, which actually could end in a moment because you're fully in control. This is what we call putting on all your eggs into one basket. Of course, if we trip over, then all the eggs are broken. So the key is to keep control and have your eggs in lots of different baskets. It's like spreading your portfolio. It's the same kind of thing. You know, as long as you have a multitude of techniques to rely on, if one stops working for you, then the other one will cushion the process for you. And that means that you won't have this terrible slump that some people have when maybe they're just relying on one uh, booking platform and then the booking platform goes or changes their policy or whatever it might be, decides they're not going to promote that particular business like they have been doing in the past and then it's gone. The focus definitely needs to be if it's your business You need to stay in control of your business. You need to know how to do that and make sure that you spread your bets, spread your portfolio. And then no one can hold you to ransom or hold your business to ransom. So we're kind of living in a time where actually it's quite a shocking time. We've never known a time where banks can go bust, where property markets can totally bottom out and people can lose lose their jobs and lose their homes and mortgages can just be taken away because people either can't pay them or the banks have decided they're not going to give them to them anymore. And we've never known this when such massive businesses have just gone bust and no longer exist. Household names are disappearing before our eyes. And millions of jobs around the world are becoming redundant. We've gone into worldwide recession. We've never known a time like this. So it's also the same time we must be thinking, how can we keep ourselves safe? How can we keep our businesses safe? How can we not just rely on outside support to attract our guests? Like online travel agents and booking agents or Facebook ads These are all great individually, but should never just be used on their own without anything else. For example, recently, Airbnb have put up their fees really significantly. But what they've done is they've almost moved up to kind of an industry average. So they're not over, you know, they're not too expensive. They're not something that's over and above everyone else they've kind of come up to the industry average but this means that so many businesses that were relying on the income are now having to pay extra fees to airbnb why is airbnb doing this well because they're about to float on the stock market so they need to increase their profits to make it a more profitable investment for shareholders So there's always things that are happening that we don't know what's happening and it will have an impact on us, but we won't feel that impact if we spread our bets. That's kind of what I'm trying to get here, the message here, that if you have a business and your holiday rental or your glamping business or your eco resort, that is a significant business, then you need to be in control of it. You need to have the system set up so that you can be strong on your own and then you'll be able to stand up to any challenges that come your way in the future. What you don't want to do is land on the snake in the game of snakes and ladders. You want to be able to control what's happening to you and your business. And the key is to get really good at doing this on your own. But it won't happen if you do nothing about it. It won't happen if you don't take control about finding out how to do these things. 
maybe you're at that point, just the same as my previous client of saying, you can't do this because it's about technology that you don't find easy to learn. Maybe the internet just isn't your thing, or you've just convinced yourself you don't have the time. But ask yourself a question. Do you have the time to attract more guests to your business? Do you have the time to increase your turnover? Well, I hope you're going to say yes, because if you if you say no, then I'm afraid mm, we probably need to have another conversation about that. But you do have the time. The internet can be your thing. And if it isn't your thing, then find someone else who can work with you to help you with what you're trying to achieve. And just imagine if you could increase your bookings by just a few percent a year. So how much extra money will that bring into your business? That's definitely going to pay for the person who you might have to get in to help you with it. So what could you do with that money if you didn't have to pay someone else to help you do the work? Well, you could use that extra money to pay for a cleaner or a bookkeeper so that can free you up to take a bit more time off so that you can really dedicate some time to effectively marketing your business. Now, would that be worth it? Yes, of course it would. Because not only will you be bringing more guests and more turnover, but you'll be feeling good about being in control and you'll be feeling a bit more safe about your future and your business's future because you'll understand where you can attract your guests from. Maybe you might want to use the extra money to pay for a new unit that you've been planning. Uh, maybe you've been thinking about doing a tree house or a new pod or whatever it might be. And then, of course, once that's set up, you can start attracting guests and your growth potential will be huge because the money, the extra money you're bringing in, you can apply to growing your business and that is going to feel great. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. But maybe you want to add another element to your business for your kids to take over, for example, when they get old enough. Maybe you, this for you is all about building some kind of legacy, something to support your family and to keep them engaged with your land and keeping them on your land and managing your land when, you know, you're a bit too old to do it yourself. Won't that be amazing if you can hand something over to them with a feeling that, it's safe. It's a safe business. It's a good business. It's a strong business because you've now got this occupancy that you can be proud of. That will feel amazing, yeah? Of course it will. Do you think that will make you feel proud? Well, I know it will make me feel proud if I could do that for my family. What an amazing thing. Not only do you have a business of today, but you're helping them secure their future and what they can do in this unstable world to have a good future but what if you know that that's what you need to do and you just need to get some answers to your questions so you can take the action because you've just got lots of questions you don't know how to find the answers but then when you know you know when you've got those answers you'll be okay but you've been stuck for a while floundering around not kind of knowing what direction to take not knowing where to start wouldn't it feel amazing wouldn't it feel amazing to know what you need to do next and to just get it done, to have that list of things that you need to do. Yeah, right, of course it would. It would feel amazing to feel that you're off again, you're moving again, and that would feel great. I know I would feel great if I was stuck for so long, feeling frustrated and not knowing what to do next, and then suddenly the answers were there and I'd know exactly the path I needed to take next. The shift is actually quite simple. All that you need to do is take the action. So I worked with someone recently who had set up his eco retreat in the UK and was really feeling a bit stuck about what he should do next with his business because he had so many questions and he didn't know the answers to them. And so this was kind of making him feel very unsure about the direction he should be taking. And as a result, he was totally stuck. But he soon discovered that putting a few tents up in a field 
and then hoping that the guests would find him wasn't the way it would work and that he needed to remove the trial and error that he was doing, which meant that he wasn't making any progress and he was frustrated about his lack of progress and therefore what he should do next. And instead, he decided to take action and seek the help that he needed. Lack of help was the key, which reduced his confidence and caused real problems for him in his progress. And as soon as he got the help he needed and his questions answered, he was just flying. He just knew what he needed to do next. So when we met, I was really delighted to discover that he was open to taking real action. And this is another part of this whole puzzle and is why I have the slogan with my business, Inspired Courses. And my slogan says that it's all about knowledge plus action leads to results. So I can give people all the answers that they need, but if they don't take the action following on from that, then they won't get the results that they need. It's really that simple. And as for my client, he felt empowered. He knew he had all the tools and the ideas and the answers to move forward. And we made so much progress in that one day that he was super excited and exhausted when I left because he knew exactly what he needed to do next. This is not a unique situation. This is something that so many businesses experience all of the time, yet so many miss the opportunity to make this type of progress. Maybe it's because they feel awkward learning new things or a bit out of their comfort zone doing something different to what they've always done. But like I explained in my last episode, if you are feeling uncomfortable and a bit like you're out of your comfort zone, That's a good thing because this means you're up leveling. You're up leveling to a different level where you're challenging yourself. And yeah, that feels uncomfortable, but it's a good thing. You're jumping up a level. But many people miss the opportunity to make this type of progress. Maybe they feel awkward. Maybe the comfort zone is just too much of a challenge for them. And I see this all the time with businesses that have been going for years They've had great success maybe because they have been riding the wave of being one of the early adopters. And as we know, early adopters win. But then when things start to slow down and take a bit of a dip, they find that they haven't been keeping up with what works in the industry. So they can't adapt and move with the changes in customer behavior. I talk about this more in episode 18 and go and check that out if you've got a moment. But It was comments from businesses like this and a question from a listener that inspired me to do that episode. The business had noticed a downturn in their bookings and gaps opening up where there had never been gaps before. And I've been hearing this a lot from others, not just in the UK, but across the world. And when you start seeing trends like that, you start asking questions, why is this happening? Now, I work with businesses around the world. I'm heavily involved in events in the US and the UK. So I really benefit from having a bird's eye view in the industry. And because I've been hearing this, I decided to do a bit of research and find out what was going on. Now, it's interesting. The results were surprisingly similar similar across the board and indicated one thing. Customer buying behavior is changing. This industry is changing. No longer can the early adopters assume that it's just going to continue as it's always continued. Now is the time to look at things, refresh systems, to diversify and to look at what needs to be done differently. Now, I believe that some of these changes are being fueled by the on demand life that we all have now. So let me explain. We all know about Netflix, Amazon, door-to-door meals, Spotify. If we want it in the next few minutes or the next day or so, we are able to get it instantly. So this is exactly what I think has been generating the changes in the buyer behaviour and particularly in guest booking in the industry because people are so used to having things on demand. They are now researching their holidays and making last minute bookings. So it's really interesting how the whole industry seems to be moving. And those businesses that are keeping up with the changes are surviving unscathed. And those who are not are beginning to struggle and notice the differences. Now, it's really interesting in my own uh, glamping business group and unique holiday rental group. 
I get lots of people talking about how things are really changing for them while I get lots of others saying how it's pretty much the same as always, business as usual. So it really does depend on how people are actually approaching their marketing and getting their guest attraction strategies up and running and how they're actually getting themselves in front of their potential guests. So basically, if you're not prepared to push yourself out of your comfort zone and seek expert advice or to consider doing things differently or to learn how to use different platforms and different techniques, then, well, we'll just have to see. Hopefully this won't impact you. So what is the shift? Well, the shift is saying yes. So rather than drifting around, trying to work it all out for yourself, the key is saying yes to finding out the tools and processes needed to help you in your situation and in your particular business and location, which is going to be different from somebody else who may be somewhere else. So let's face it, we've all been there at one point or another. I certainly know that I have. In fact, it was only when I really started to invest in my business that it really started to grow. You can't do these things for free. You may think the internet is opening up all these opportunities for you, and it is. But the real good, juicy stuff that works is not free. There is no value in free. The transformation is in the transaction. I see this all the time across the board in all businesses. There is no value in free. If you don't have a transaction, you won't have the knowledge or motivation to really make it happen. This just leads you to rely on hope, hope marketing, hope guest attraction. I hope this is all going to work out and I hope I've got this right and all those types of actions and processes that you hope are going to work. Instead of doing what others are doing, which is learning what really works and taking quick, swift, efficient action to get the results. Hoping something will magically turn out fine one day is not the way to run a business. Investing in your future is a way to run a business. So some of you will understand that taking action now instead of waiting months or even years and missing all those opportunities in that time is not the way to go. However, some of you will have already switched off because you rarely get to the doing part. Taking the action is the only thing that will get you the results in any part of your life, but particularly when running a business in an industry that is going through so much change at the moment. So if you're not paying attention to it, then what does that make you? A hobbyist or a business owner? So which one are you? Are you still listening? Or have you been taking it all in? Or have you simply just switched off? So will you be the one seeking to think about and understand the evidence about how the industry is changing? Will you be the one that will be thinking about how that's going to affect you and what you're doing? And will you be the one that will be taking the steps to learn the processes that you need to engage to make sure your business carries on or at least starts and launches to attract guests and grow your profits in light of all of these changes. Now if that's you then you need to think about making a change for yourself. Now change is great. It is what can lead us to open doors so ones that may lead to even bigger and better benefits but sometimes people don't like change, they fear change and they don't actually want to make the change in their life and as a result they hope the things are going to stay the same as they are and unfortunately that's not the right thing to do. Now it feels really good to be in control right? Of course it does and to change and diversify and to mold yourself into something that is different because that's responding to the way the world is changing is the way to go and there's no doubt that to get good at attracting your guests and continue to be good at it you have to make it a regular habit to understand what works and to keep up with the industry and what's changing and to take action and to make it happen so not doing this is why so many people fail and you must have heard the story about blockbusters yeah well 
Blockbusters carried on doing what they'd always done. So they were a video, video rental agency and they rented out physical videos. And even though people were telling them that things were changing and the technology was changing and they needed to get involved in the kind of the data rental industry. And then, of course, Blockbusters was given the opportunity to buy a new business. And the new business was called Netflix. And unfortunately for Blockbusters, they turned it down. So they turned down the opportunity to buy Netflix for five million. The offer was there, but they just laughed at them. Now, anyone know what Blockbusters is doing now? Yep, they went under. But we all know how it turned out for Netflix. So this is about looking at your blockbuster moments and to understand when things are changing around you and actually you need to maybe take a step towards finding out what's happening. So you are actually one step closer to being part of a really intelligent and savvy community that is in touch with learning how to attract their guests in a structured and safe environment. These places are not easy to find. How do I know that? Because there weren't any and I had to make one. So I am about to open the doors to my once a year only guest booking success masterclass and I am kicking it off with a free web class that I've designed to show you three techniques you can use to attract more guests to your glamping business, to your unique holiday rental or your eco retreat and that you can use them straight after the web class and to really make an impact to what you're doing. So even if you decide you don't want to take any further action enrolling in the Guest Booking Success Masterclass, that's fine. You'll still come to the web class and you'll still learn three excellent techniques that will help your business throughout next season. So that leaves you quite a simple choice. You can keep doing what you've always done and ignore the need to change regardless of the evidence. Or you can join in the web class and learn some really high value ways to attract more guests with other like-minded businesses who will also be on the call. Can you imagine what it would be like to be able to turn on and off your guest bookings like a tap? So in the web class, what I'm covering are three key things. So what I'm going to look at are the biggest mistakes business owners make when trying to attract new guests so that you can avoid them. I'm also going to be looking at how you can start to attract more guests without having to sell anything using a little known method because not everyone feels comfortable selling, although you do need to get better at that. And also how you can quickly attract guests by copying what one business did that got them booked out for a full year with within only a few weeks and it was epic and even if you have a, a tiny part of their results that will still mean significant bookings for you for next season and so it's about looking at what others are doing successfully and applying it to your own business in the unique way for your business because every business is different and I'm going to e explain all of that I'm going to go through all of that and how that works so if you're interested, you can sign up really quickly. So all you need to do is go to inspiredcourses.com forward slash more guests. That's all you need to do. Inspiredcourses.com forward slash more guests. Go to that link, put your name in the box with your email address, and then you'll be sent all the information inviting you to the web class. You can come along, you can take what you need to take and you can leave with the information that you need to get more bookings for next season. But if you're not the type of person who is ready to actually take action, then this is probably not for you. My slogan is all about knowledge plus action equals results. I can give you all of my knowledge and all the information you need, but unless you're willing to take the action, you will not get the results. So if you're not the type of person who's ready to actually take action, then please, this is probably not for you. You don't need to sign up. Maybe not taking action is working for you right now and you see, see no real need for change. That's fine. That's cool. That's brilliant. You know, you need to do what's right for you and what's right for your business. But for those of you who are really ready 
now and understand how important this is and you want to learn some really significant ways to attract more guest bookings then this is about taking action you will be given the processes and the steps for three key things you can do so it's important that you take this opportunity while you can because this doesn't happen often i only launch my class once a year and this web class will only be available for the next few weeks. So make sure you sign up inspiredcourses.com forward slash more guests. And seriously, this is my gift to you. If you really want to get your guest attraction processes in place and get these bookings rolling in, then join the web class. And if that feels uncomfortable to you, then that's great because this means you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and starting to jump up a level. And that's exciting. So what's it gonna be? Can you imagine how amazing it will be to finally understand the steps you need to take to attract more guests to your business and achieve the bookings you want? Hopefully you do and hopefully you're excited. See you there in the web class. All the details you can get following the link inspiredcourses.com forward slash more guests. Take care, see you soon.